Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we are continuing our study of embedded systems design. We are now into a subject of looking at the stack and subroutines. So in this video, what we're going to do is look at the concept of a stack and how it, it is implemented on the MSP430, specifically the MCU that we're using on our launch board, launch pad. <clears throat> okay, so the stack is a data type, data structure, let's say, and it's a, the way that it behaves is like a stack of plates. Okay, so this is the analogy. You start off with an empty stack, and then you come along with plate number one, and you put it on there. Then you come with plate number two, then you come with plate number three, then you come with plate number four. <clears throat> and this is just like a plate dispenser in a cafeteria, right? So then when you go back to uh, get a plate, you're going to take a plate, but notice that you can only take the top plate off. So you can only take plate four off and then you can get access to plate three, then plate two, <clears throat> and then plate one. So we call this structure a uh, last in first out data structure. And what's nice about this is that you inherently keep the order of data that's put onto the stack. Notice that it's gonna be one, two, three, four, and then you pull off four, three, two, one. And if you can just keep track of where you are in terms of how many things you've pushed on, uh, how many plates you've put on and how many you've taken off, you can know where you're at any given time on the stack. Okay, so that's the, the storage structure of a stack. Okay, that's the concept. <clears throat> now, why do we use a stack in computers? Well, it actually gives us a way to dynamically allocate memory. And when I say dynamically, uh, think about what we've done so far when we set up a variable. We've gone down into data memory and we've done a dot, we've done a directive where we say dot short, and then we give it an address label dot short, and then we put a value there. Or if we want to reserve a spot in memory, uh, we, we would do dot space. <clears throat> and those are great. Uh, and those are great for variables that you're going to use forever. But sometimes in a program, you might get in a situation where you need to, the program's running and you need to allocate some memory. And maybe you don't know exactly how much you're going to use. Uh, and so a stack would be a good way to do that. You can basically stream information into this MCU and pop, you know, stack it up. So put it onto the stack and then it sits there. And then when you're ready, just kind of yank it off. Okay. So, and, and ironically, <clears throat> not ironically, but when you, when we get to a higher level uh, language like C, if you define a variable, like you say int i or something like that, or int var, the compiler will make a decision based upon your program structure as to where it's going to create that variable. And many times that variable is put into the stack. The other options, of course, are uh, a register, a CPU register, or you could actually just define a uh, spot in memory using the dot short or dot space. <clears throat> okay, now that's the concept. What physically is a stack? So what we do with a stack, how we implement this, is we use the bottom portion of data memory. So we start putting information onto the stack at the, at the, you could say the largest address or the bottom, and then we put information onto it and move up into data memory. And then when we take it off, we, we take it off from the top of the stack and we move this way in memory. What keeps track of where we're at at any given time in terms of what address we're at in the stack is the stack pointer. So this is R1 in the CPU, and this has been there the whole time. We just have never used it. If you look at our specific MCU, <clears throat> which is the MSP430 FR2355, we have data memory that sits here and it is 4K of data memory. And so, and it's, it's SRAM, but it's physically located at address 2000 hex to 2FFF hex. And so that, that address range gives you 4,096 uh, specific locations in memory, specific address locations. And what we do <clears throat> is we use the stack pointer to point at the very bottom of the stack. And then what we do is we can move the stack pointer up into data memory and we can move information in or move information out. So what this means is that when we start up our program, if we wanna use the stack, we need to initialize our stack pointer to be the bottom of memory. It turns out that the way that the stack works is it's always pointing to 
the last place that memory that information was put onto the stack. And so when we first reset our MCU, there's nothing on there. And so we actually initialize it to address 3000. And that is the address immediately after data memory. And then the way that it works is that when you do your first uh, insertion of information on the stack, the stack pointer will, will be decremented up and then you'll move to there and then decremented it up. And then when you want to get information, it'll be incremented, incremented. Okay. We haven't done this though. Notice that we're sitting here talking about this and how important it is to initialize the stack pointer, but we don't do it. Well, one of the things that's interesting is it's been done for us when we create a new CCS project. So there is a global constant that's called underscore underscore stack underscore and, and that's what actually takes care of initializing the stack uh, based upon the where the data memory is. So when we create a new CCS project and we get that main.asm that has code already in it, you'll see that this is taken care of for us. Okay, <clears throat> to access the stack, the MSP430 provides two instructions. So the first one is gonna be push, and that is gonna be putting data on the stack. And the way that it works is since we have to move the stack pointer up in data memory, we actually decrement the stack pointer. So if stack pointer is at 3000, we're gonna decrement it to get into a location where we can move information. And then we take the destination of the instruction and we move it into the, the address that the stack's at. So notice that we use the, the at symbol here to represent the stack pointer is holding the address of where information's gonna go. But the way that the push works is you first decrement it to get to a new location in stack, then you move, okay? And that, that's, that behavior is why we initialize the stack pointer to 3000, because then our first uh, push is we're gonna have to decrement it, then move. To get information off of the stack, we pop. So pop is the instruction, and what it does is then it Inc it actually moves the information out of stack and then it increments the stack, okay? So that this is, we move the information out and then we increment it to get to the next location. Okay, when you do a dot W or a dot B, that influences how many addresses you move up or down into the stack. So for example, if you're gonna do a dot word, so I'm gonna do a push dot W, you need to move the stack two addresses. So I'm gonna go from 3000 to two FFF to two FFE, and then I'll move a 16 bit word in. And if I'm gonna pop, what I need to do is move the 16 bit word, then I'm going to increment down to get to where the next location could be. So these are the two instructions. All right, let's, let's just take a look at a little cartoon graphic of how this might work. Here's our data memory and nothing's in it. We're at the very bottom of, stat of the data memory. And the reason you do that is, is because you wanna have the most ability to dynamically allocate memory. Uh, because we define our hard-coded constants and, and variables uh, at the beginning of data memory. So here we are, we have stack pointers at 3000, and that's not in, in the data memory, that's at the address uh, right after it. And let's do a push of AAAA onto the stack. I've drawn this memory map using 16-bit words for data, that means all the addresses are even aligned. So I only show the even addresses. So my first address that I could actually put information into would be 2FFE. So the, the process to actually push information onto this stack would be decrement stack by two, <clears throat> that takes you to this address, and then go ahead and move information into there. If we wanted to then push another value, we would then decrement stack pointer by two, that takes you to two FFC, and we would then push another word on there. Then let's pop. So if we wanna pop, what we do is we move the information out first, and then we go ahead and increment the stack pointer so that it now points to the next location in the stack. And then if we did another pop, we would actually, we would then move the information out and then increment the stack pointer. Okay, now remember these two instructions are taken care of for us, so we just push and pop, but you do need to, to pay attention if you're ever messing around with eight versus 16 bit words, okay? All right, here's an interesting thing. All of our variables that we, we set up initially, like dot short and dot space, those go at the top uh, or the beginning of data memory. 
We use the bottom of data memory because we want to allocate, we're assuming that we only use some, a few bytes up here or, or whatever, and all this stuff at the end has not been allocated. So what we do is we move, we dynamically allocate memory as we move up uh, through the data memory. And <clears throat> that gives us the most flexibility of size of the stack. But you could absolutely accidentally push information onto the stack and overwrite information that resides or variables that reside at the top of the data memory. And when you do that, when you overwrite stuff that you didn't mean to, that is called stack overflow. <laughs> so you probably have heard that term before, but that's what that means. It's where your stack is actually going into a region of the memory map that is forbidden. And you could actually, uh, you could actually if you got in an infinite loop or something, you could actually get in a situation, almost like recursive would, recursion would be an example, where you start alloc allocating memory and you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. And finally, you're even outside of data memory. So that is stack overflow. All right. Well, let's do an example. Uh, let's, let's take a look at this in the debugger as we move some information around. Okay, so go ahead and fire up CCS and then we'll have our little example right over here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'll put this over here and let's do it. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna go file new and I'll go CCS project. And then I'm gonna name this uh, ASM, let's call it stack. because We're just gonna do one example and assembly only. Fires up, I got my MSP launch pad plugged in. And first and foremost, check this out. Here is an instruction, initialize the stack pointer. So look at that. The stack pointer right here is you're moving underscore underscore stack underscore end into stack pointer. So this, this pound underscore underscore stack end holds the value 3000 and you're putting that into stack pointer immediately. So that is the first instruction in, in our program. Now, where does this come from? This, the reason it's a global variable is because this instruction will be in every main.asm for all the different MCUs that TI might make within the MSP430 family. But every time you create a new project, it knows where the end of data memory is. So if we happen to choose an MCU that only had 2K of memory, that would be a different uh, starting location for the stack pointer. For our project, when we choose the specific M MCU, when we type in MSP430 FR2355, it knows that your data memory is 4K long and that the address you want to use is 3000. So we don't really mess with that. We let the project actually create that for us. <clears throat> okay, so let's come down here and let's go ahead. This is going to do uh, basically what we just looked at in that cartoon example. So let's do jump main. We just set up our infinite loop or our while one. And let's just start off with this. Let's go move.w and let's just put pound AAAA into a register R4. And then let's put pound zero BBBB into R5. Okay, so we got our two registers that hold a value. And let's do this. Let's do push R4 push r5 and i can do push.w but if i don't remember it always defaults to uh 16 bit operations and so i can do that i'm pushing i'm pushing them and then let's do pop <laughs> let's pop these into r6 and pop that into r7 okay so here's what it should look like we're going to push aaa a, a, a push BBBB, and those were in R4 and R5. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull them, but when I pull, or excuse me, pop, the first pop is gonna get BBBB, and it's gonna go into R6, and then I'll pop R7, and it'll get AAAA, okay? All right, so let's let's fire that up and watch what happens. So go ahead and boom. Starting up a little session here. Okay, so the first thing that I want to look at is I want to go up to my registers, look at stack pointer. Lo and behold, the stack pointer is pointing at 3000, just as we suspected. Okay, now let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to go R4 and 
to R7. Well, let's change this into hex. Okay, and now let's watch this. So I'm gonna set a breakpoint right here. Okay, well, actually, you know, actually, when I downloaded this, it already had 3,000 in it from the last time that I started a project. So when we step this, it will overwrite that for, with the first instruction. Okay, so I'm gonna run to the breakpoint. Okay, and this is gonna go into data memory. So let's go look at data memory. So let's go to 0x3000, and this is the bottom of the stack. So if I scroll up here, and I'm gonna, let me try to get the column so that there's only two on here. Eh, okay, anyway, so this is address FFFE, and this is address to FFC, okay? And so that's where the stack is gonna start going, okay? Notice that 3000, it's all three FFFF. I don't know why that is. But anyway, that's the, we're looking at program memory right here. This, this is, these addresses are in program memory. Okay, so I'm gonna run down to my breakpoint and I'm at 8000A program counter and I'm ready to start. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go step, step, and I loaded R4 and R5 with AAAA and BBBB. I am now gonna push R4. Now look at where it should go. It should go into 2FFE at the very bottom word within data memory, which is gonna be right here. So if I step, boom, look at it. Look at where it went. AAAA is now in the last location in, in data memory, which is the first spot open in the stack. All right, life is good. Notice what stack pointer did. It went ahead and it had decremented by two and then moved into here and it is now pointing it to FFE. So it's always pointing at the last piece of information that was pushed. And so now watch me push this again. I'm gonna go push and look at it, it pushed it at BBBB because it decremented stack pointer by two, by two. so it went to two FFC and then it stored there or moved. And now look at that. Now watch what happens. I'm gonna pull, and I pulled the address that the stack pointer was at, which was 2FFC, which held FFF, or excuse me, it held BBBB. And where did I put it? I put it into R6. And now the stack pointer is pointing at the next location that has information on it, which is this address right here. So now watch what happens when I, when I step again. I pulled, and pu pull is another word for pop, so I, I sometimes get, sometimes say pull, but I mean pop, it's the same thing. So I popped <clears throat> this, this AAAA off the stack and I put it into R7, but more importantly, where's stack pointer now? It's at 3000. So this is fantastic, okay? So we did it. We just pushed information onto the stack and then we pulled it into different registers. But more importantly, we got to actually see physically what a stack is and where the information is and how we use the stack pointer to track it. Okay, so that is the example. That's enough of the example to show you how this works. So you did it, you used the stack, congratulations. Uh, as always, remember to support my channel by subscribing so that I can continue to bring you these videos. Goodbye.